We are the chairpersons, moderators. Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank Dr. Bansi, Dayakir, and everybody involved in this conference to get us all here and discuss certain very vitally important points. We all know that lipids and that two LDL cholesterol has been in extreme limelight for last 20, 25, 30 years. Why not? I mean, obviously it has to be because we could establish few connections with the LDL cholesterol and atherosclerosis. What we could understand and learn in last 30 years is higher the level of LDL cholesterol, higher the risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and event. So that was first truth we as a science could gather. The second truth which science could gather was more important than that, that you reduce LDL cholesterol and you get benefit. Now that happens with most of the drugs which are used in today's market, but a very important point is as far as reduction in LDL cholesterol, NASCVD risk reduction is concerned, there could be a mathematical equation which was established. What do I mean? That you reduce LDL cholesterol by one millimol, that comes to roughly 40 milligram per deciliter, it will reduce cardiovascular events by 21%. So every 40 milligram LDL cholesterol reduction achieved, you will get 20 to 22% reduction in atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Now this fact is true, whether you are using a drug to reduce LDL cholesterol in primary prevention or secondary prevention, it's true for men, women, and children. It's true for any starting level of LDL cholesterol. So whatever level of LDL cholesterol you start, say for example, you've got LDL cholesterol of 160 milligram, which is pretty high, you reduce it by 40 milligrams. So 160, let us take it to 120, and you will get 20% reduction in cardiovascular disease. Now 120, you reduce further by 40 milligrams, so reach to 80 milligrams, you get further 20% benefit. 80 milligram LDL cholesterol, you reduce further by 40 milligram deciliter, so take it to 40, and you get further 20% reduction. So it's very, very important. At whatever baseline of LDL cholesterol, you reduce LDL cholesterol by 40 milligram, and you get benefit. And a very important point, previously we had a lot of trials with statin. Now we have got multiple molecules to reduce LDL cholesterol. And what could have been established is you reduce LDL cholesterol by any methods. May it be lifestyle, may it be BAS, bile acid sequestrant, may it be statin, may it be azetimibe, may it be PCSK9 inhibition therapy, whatever method you get your LDL cholesterol down, you are going to get benefit. And we also know that when you reduce LDL cholesterol to even a level of 15 or 20 milligram per deciliter, there are no major adverse effects found because of per se a very lowered level of LDL cholesterol. And so in today's world, the dictum is how much low you can achieve, how much early you can reach there, and how long you can maintain there. That's the whole crux. So a boy who has got heterozygous familiar hyperlipidemia, a boy of 15 years, believe me, with LDL cholesterol of 180, please don't wait, that boy is too small, he's 15 years, his LDL is 180, you have to attack that level of LDL cholesterol. So how much early you can start, that's very important. So please do not wait for a long, long time. And believe me, lifestyle is always good, but it doesn't impact and affect LDL cholesterol to more than 15% extent. So somebody who has got LDL cholesterol of 180, even if he does starvation, even if he does five hours of exercise, his LDL is not going to go less than 150. So mind well, lifestyle is very, very important, but there are limitations of every effort. And that's why, again, believe me, what is most important in today's world, every patient who enters your chamber, either for primary prevention or secondary, how much low you can reach, how much early you can reach there, and how long you can maintain that. That's where you are going to keep that person away from atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. As I talk to you, we have multiple trials. These were the trials done with PCSK9 monoclonal antibodies. They have been there for last more than eight, 10 years. What has been found is, again, there is a monotonic relationship. You reduce LDL cholesterol to a level of zero. You reduce LDL cholesterol to a level of zero you get reduction in composite cardiovascular outcomes. And when you take LDL to less than 10 milligram per deciliter, there has been no significant serious adverse effect observed. See, mind well, this is important. Many physicians are quite afraid of seeing very low figures of LDL cholesterol, 10, 15, 20. So there has been no association with serious adverse effect. You take neurocognitive events, development of new onset of diabetes, cataracts, newer progressive malignancy or occurrence of hemorrhagic stroke and muscle issues. So they are pretty safe, very safe, and so don't be afraid. 
Maybe I'm very sure most of us who are sitting here will witness a day that that's where potentially we'll be starting targeting LDL cholesterol of zero. Those days are not very far. And that's why, see, if you look to various guidelines, they have endorsed this point that if you reduce LDL cholesterol, you long, live longer and better. So look at the LDL goals now which are getting targeted. Even if you look to the Lipid Association of India 2023, which is a wonderful guideline that people who have got established atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, LDL cholesterol to be achieved is less than 50, less than 30, or even 10 to 15. And this is for extreme risk group C. Who are they? They are the people who have got polyvascular disease. They are the people who have got recurrent cardiovascular events. And there are people who have LDL cholesterol of 35, 40, and still they are getting cardiovascular events. I know there are other areas also to target. It's not only LDL cholesterol, but try to take LDL cholesterol to as low as possible. By doing that, you are going to help your patients. And we also know that approximate reduction in LDL cholesterol, which is assumed by various drugs, are mathematically clear. So if you give high intensity statin, it gives 50% reduction in LDL cholesterol. So if my LDL cholesterol is 180, if I have got already heart attack, and if I have to reach a target of 40, no statin can ever do the job. So now these are mathematical relations. So when you read an LDL class of 180, your brain has to have an impact that in all statin cannot do the job. Statin, highest possible dose plus azetimibe cannot do the job. And that's where you will need newer treatment. Unfortunately, most of the, pa most of the patients in our practice do not reach the guideline recommendations. So what is most important is now start thinking of using newer injectable molecules in people who are at high risk. I don't say that you start thinking in every case, but at least people who have got established atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, people who have got multiple events, people who have got polyvascular disease, say for example, somebody had heart attack before three years, you got him uh, with a stent, now he or she has got a stroke. So these are the highest possible risk people where LDL cholesterol has to go to 10, 15 milligram per deciliter. And that's where you have to start thinking about two novel injections. One you know that is monoclonal antibodies to PCSK9. So just understand PCSK9 is bad, is a villain. So you have to kill PCSK9. And the first way which was established to kill PCSK9 was monoclonal antibodies. So PCSK9 is a protein produced by liver hepatocyte. It goes into the blood. What does it do? It, it destroys the LDL receptors. Now what does this LDL receptors do? Whatever LDL cholesterol which is circulating in the blood is picked up by these liver cells with the help of LDL receptors and gets destroyed. So these receptors are good. They reduce your blood LDL cholesterol. Now PCSK9 is going to kill this receptor. So PCSK9 is bad, so either you can use monoclonal antibodies to them, or there is a new drug which I'm going to discuss in the next five minutes, is Inclisiran. What is Inclisiran? It's an injection which will prevent the synthesis of PCSK9. So it's a step further. What you were taught was PCSK9 is going to get produced, you block the effect. Now what is new is you do not let PCSK9 be produced. So what is this? This is the first ever treatment, only LDL lowering small interfering RNA therapy that will selectively target liver. See what is basically, it is a double-stranded RNA which has got two strands, passenger strand and guide strand. So passenger strand is, is a guide strand is conjugated with gel neck. So what happens when you give this injection, this gel neck will has an affinity for hepatocytes. So it will make the molecule reach straight away inside the liver. So after giving injection within three to five days, you do not get the blood level of this injection. It goes inside liver, out of these two strand, one strand is cleaved. The other strand will bind with mRNA, which is destined to synthesize PCSK9. So this falsy or this duplicating strand will bind with mRNA, destroy mRNA, and PCSK9 will not be produced. So how these two injections which are there in the market, they are compared. So one is monoclonal antibodies. This is alirocumab, evolocumab. They are very much available in Indian market. Ahmedabad, we have used in many, many patients. And this new agent, which is small interfering RNA, which is inclisiran. So monoclonal antibodies, they will inhibit circulating PCSK9 and will not it let bind the LDL receptors, while this new molecule, inclisiran, is going to reduce the production of PCSK9. A very important point is this injection needs to be given twice a month or maybe even once a month while this is an amazing injection. It is to be given once every six months. 
So just two shots a year and your LDL cholesterol is reduced by 50%. Obviously, both of these treatments are to be given on the top of statin, which has been established treatment, so I don't say that. Yes, people who cannot tolerate even whatever little most dose of statin, they can be given separately, but otherwise on the top of statin. A very important point is since it's, it, it goes to the hepatocytes, a very small dose of inclycerin is sufficient enough. There are multiple trials with inclycerin. See, maybe it's coming to the market for last one, one and a half years, so as a clinician, you may not be aware about the entire program, but overall, this molecule has been tested at least for 15 to 20 years in phase one, phase two, and now phase three trials also. Multiple trials in people with homozygous familial hyperlipidemia, people with heterozygous familial lipidemia, people with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, or people with high risk. And what has been found is, once you give an injection, by the three months time, it will reduce your LDL cholesterol to close to 50%. 50% reduction in LDL cholesterol achieved, and only one side effect which was found to be more than placebo is injection site reaction, which is transient, mild, and lasts for two to three days. Otherwise, no additional side effect in terms of liver dysfunction, kidney issues, CPK, or muscle issues. Not only it reduces LDL cholesterol, but it also reduces other atherogenic lipids like non-HDL cholesterol, APOB, and a very important point which is now getting a target for residual risk is lipoprotein A. So this molecule, inclycerin, reduces lipoprotein A also to a reasonable significant extent. Again, we do not know what contribution comes from LPA reduction, but it does reduce. A very important point, see, we all have been taught that first you start statin, then increase the dose of statin, then add azetimibe, then if need be, go for injection. Now, Wall says that, as I discussed to you to begin with, that if you see an LDL cholesterol of more than 150 in people who are very high risk or extreme high risk, you have to think of this injection from day one. 150 LDL with the help of statin and azetimibe cannot be reduced to less than 75 milligram per deciliter. Your target is 15, your target is 20, so day one and such strategies have been tested and it was published in JEC that yes, if you use this strategy, you can give tremendous benefit. A very, very safe molecule in renal and hepatic impairment. So people do not need to adjust the dose for mild to moderate hepatic impairment, mild, moderate or severe, severe renal impairment, no dose adjustment, very, very important point. No drug interactions with most of the cardiac drugs and no off-target effects. Not only that, the CVOT trial is yet to come, but those three trials which were done as a phase three, putting all them together and getting exploratory outcomes, there has been reduction in cardiovascular events also. Mind well, still the CVOT trial is yet to come out, but a very important point based on those phase three trials, we can extrapolate that it also reduces cardiovascular events. So you've got a wonderful bullet, rocket, or gun with you, which can, with the help of minimum adverse effect, can reduce risk of cardiovascular disease. So ladies and gentlemen, carry home message. LDL cholesterol is a vascular poison and a serious risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Probably in future we'll be targeting zero LDL. All means which reduce LDL cholesterol will give you benefit. So you can use all these lifestyle and medicines. Desired level of LDL to be achieved are less than 30 for people with extreme high risk. Now strategy is not high intensity statin, but high intensity lipid lowering treatment. And your injection in which is 2 ml, 284 milligram, once in six months will help you to achieve those low targets. Thank you very much for your kind attention.